guys. Uh, good morning. It is uh, the twelfth uh, and well, was July twelfth, two thousand eleven. Here's a couple thoughts related to what we've covered in our practice today. First of all, here's some pictures of linebackers in years past. And again, look at the athletic posture: shoulders forward, knees bent, Z's in the knees. Uh, it's important that you start and finish every drill in this posture. Here again, you see a nice posture with the, the Z's in the knees. Uh, shoulders forward, hands at the ready. So let's look at a couple things here. Again, you see here's a nice image. This is in the nine technique, right? So this is the tight end. The nine technique is, is his, his hat at about the same height as the tight end's uh, hat. And pre-snap, before the ball snapped, he's looking right at the tight end. As soon as the tight end moves, he's going to press and grab with two hands the tight end shirt, maintaining an outside shade and playing what we call the nine technique. So here's your nine technique linebacker. This guy looks like he's playing about a 50 linebacker, and this is might be a 30 inside. So fundamental, everything we do must be the stance, correct? And you see some images of some good stances. Keep in mind that the stance you use in football is very similar to the stance you use in the weight when doing the hand clean. And again, the, the bent knee, the head up, the arms relaxed. You, you don't need to have your hands ready for contact in level two, but your arms should be relaxed and ready to run, whether it's left, right, downhill, or whatever it might be. Here's a numbering system. <clears throat> Again, we've been over this many times. The even number techniques are 0, 2, 4, and 6. The odd number techniques are 1, 3, 5, and 9. I know 9 is the oddball. It doesn't seem to make sense, but that's the way that just about every school in the country would number their program. So keep those numbers in mind. Now, you know if you're a linebacker and we want you in a 9 shade but off the ball, then that's a 90 technique. So the 90 linebacker lines up where a 9 would be but off the ball. The 60 linebacker lines up head the tight end, the 40 linebacker head up the tackle, the 20 head up the guard, and on and on it goes. So you must know these, this slide, and you must know the different techniques that we've assigned. As a linebacker, your first step, fellas, just up and down. It's a read step. Don't be overly aggressive. Don't get influenced by false keys and those kinds of things. You want to go pick your first step, pick it up and down. And as a motto, don't go till you know. If you're not certain where the ball's at, slow play it. Be a little bit slow to react. And I'm sure you'll find the tempo you need, but you, you've got to, you can't fly out if you haven't read your keys. So first read your keys and then go to the ball. Uh, here's the different types of blocks we can see. These are different types of schemes and blocks you can see on the, uh, from the offensive side of the ball. We need to know how to respond to each of those. Important that we be able to read what we call the triangle. Remember, this is paramount. Now, this is the intent of this particular discussion. If I'm the will linebacker right here, I have to read the triangle. And in the triangle, I have three keys. The, the first part of the triangle is the uncovered lineman in front of me. This guy here, the guard, is our number one key, as it says right here. Number two is the running back. It's lost a little bit in the text, but this is a running back right here. And so when the ball is snapped, we're going to read the lineman, and we're going to then put our eyes to the back. And the back will either confirm or conflict with the key that we get from the first part of the triangle. As the last part of the triangle, we go to the next offensive lineman who's in position to block us. In this case, it's the offensive tackle. So... As a rule for reading a triangle, number one, you read one. Read number one. What does the number one key tell you? What is he doing? He's down blocking, base blocking, pulling, trapping. He can do a variety of different things we're going to cover here in a minute. But if you read number one and you confirm your response to number one by looking at number two, in this case the running back, then you're done. Read one, confirm with two, and be done. Read one, confirm with two, and be done. If you get to the position now where you've read uh, number one, and you go to number two, you read what two is doing. Let's say two's motion conflicts with what you see out of number your number one read. Then go to number three to be free, as we say. So here it is, boys. In a triangle, you read number one, confirm the triangle with number two's action, and be done. If they confirm, if they're in, co in concert, as you might say, then you're done. But if you read number one, and number two's action is contrary to number one's action, You've got to read number three to be free. We'll tell you more about that as we go through it, but it's reading a triangle. So, again, read one, confirm two, and be done, or if you have to, go to three to be free. The third read you may not get to. And you don't, what I'm suggesting is you don't need a third read. If you read one and you read two and you're good to go and that's all you need, then you're done. Again, here you see an explanation about it. Let's look at a couple examples. Here's a triangle now for the mic. See, the first part of the triangle is the uncovered lineman the guard right here. The second key for the mic is the near running back. 
The third key is the next lineman who could block him. So that's our triangle, as you see right there. And so I'm suggesting that as a, as a linebacker, you read the guard. If the guard does something, which indicates you to come downhill, like a down block, and you see the back coming towards you, it's game, set, match, it's over, you come downhill. That It's the end of discussion. But if you see the guard down block and you see the running back expand, well, then you've got to go to th your third key to decide what it is you're going to do. You know, if the third key is down blocking, also probably indicates you the ball's going outside. Uh, we'll show you some examples here in a minute. But this is the key uh, progression, one, two, and then three, for the mic in this scenario. Over here, this is the read progression for the will. Number one is the lineman. Number two is the running back. Three is a tackle. Again, if you read one and what number two does confirms your suspicion, then you're done. It, it's, it's over. You go and you continue to follow your original path. But if you find out that the read from one conflicts with the read from two, then you've got to go to the, your third read to have an idea what to do. Here's some important terms, guys, that you need to be familiar with and important terms for being a linebacker. Number one is downhill. It's movement towards the line of scrimmage. So see, this is a linebacker. If this linebacker goes this way, he moves towards the line of scrimmage, that's a downhill movement. Sometimes we've seen linebackers do this. This is what we call soft or lateral backward movement. It, it, it won't help us if your key set, if you see down block like this and you should be doing this, but instead you stand up tall and, and waver in here, we lose. That's not good. So if, if your coach tells you, or we said, hey, you've got to get downhill, downhill means you've got to come like a train downhill towards the ball. The gap side is the side of the shade you are playing. So, for example, see, here's the, uh, here's the gap side for the nose. Here's the nose. Here's the center. This is his gap side because that's the A gap. Here's the opposite A gap. In this case, the mic, um, if he's, let's say he's in a 10. If he's in a 10, and this shoulder is his gap side shoulder. That's his gap side shoulder. This is the away shoulder over here if he lines up in a 10. Now, if he's lined up, let's say, in a uh, 30, Let's put, let's put a backer over here in a 30 technique. But now the gap side shoulder is this shoulder, and this is the away shoulder. So keep in mind what a gap side shoulder is. Mirror is a term you can hear every now and then. Mirror means you do exactly what your key does. You know, if this is your key and he pulls, then you pull. You mirror it. It's almost as if there's a mirror right here, and you can see a little degree of symmetry between the two responses. Inside, outside leverage. You know, an inside leverage means you're probably the pursuing or the scrape linebacker here. And if the ball goes to your outside, you need to have inside leverage if you're this particular linebacker. You want to be closer to the ball uh, than the running back. So what we can't have is we can't have this Mike linebacker decide he's going to go make the play by running like this and get outside the ball carrier. In this case, because flows away from this linebacker, he's on the back side, he needs, to, he needs to pursue the ball, but with an inside leverage. That's an inside leverage. If he pursues so aggressively that he gets, gets over the top of the ball, and we're concerned about a cutback like that from the running back. That is inside leverage. Out here, this is outside leverage. So since this is flow to my side, I'm this, I'm this linebacker. I'm keying the, my triangle here, as it were. And if I get a read which indicates flow to the outside, and you're responsible for the, uh, in this case, let's say the B gap, well, flow to the outside in the zone step here means that I've got to stay on the outside pad of this running back, this ball carrier. Don't, don't get caught up inside here because if you're inside the ball and this backer's inside the ball, then we're a little compromised as the ball goes to the edge. So no difference between inside and outside leverage. Generally, <coughs> if you're on this side of the ball and the ball comes to your side, then you're an outside lever. If you're away from the football, see the football is going this way. If you're away from the football pre-snap, then you should maintain an inside leverage. Here's a scheme called a scoop scheme. A scoop scheme means that these two players here, let's just darken them in, this guy and this guy want to block the nose and the backer. Instead of having the guard fire out to the backer, by the time he gets there with fast flow, he's not going to get to him. The backer is going to be gone. So oftentimes what offensive teams will do is use what's called a scoop technique where they tell this guard to step and try to overtake the nose. Overtake the nose meaning take a little bucket step and then run and try to get under his pads and secure the nose back inside. And while he does this little scoop bucket step, the center is going to rip, and he's going to try to meet the linebacker to where the linebacker is going. That's a scoop technique. And if you're the linebacker over here, and you see the scoop technique begin to evolve, this is always a backside technique. That means the ball is going to the play side, which is going to be on this side of the football. Scoop block. That's a scoop block. 
And again, you see here's the, the 30 tech alignment. Here's the three tech, the three technique who lines up here, and the 30 technique would be just off the ball behind him if we stacked him or maybe we didn't. But you need, if we tell you to line up a 30 technique, you got to know it's on the outside shoulder of the guard. A 10 technique, here's a one technique would line up here. A, a 10 technique is off the ball, but again, at that same position where a 10 technique would be. Let's leave it at that. We'll come back and look at 30 linebacker reads here in just a minute.